Hi, I'm going to go through some basic thyroid physiology in this video. I recommend that you have a look at some detailed anatomy on these structures, but just for the sake of introducing this video, I've got a very basic diagram to demonstrate where these uh, structures sit. So the thyroid gland sort of looks like the wings of a butterfly, and I've only drawn the, the left one here because it's a side-on view, but it sits at the front of your neck in front of the windpipe, in front of your trachea. The hypothalamus is up high, sort of in the centre of your brain, and the pituitary gland sits underneath it on a stalk. I'm going to move on to sort of the feedback mechanism by which the thyroid hormones are produced. Now the ladder starts at the top with the hypothalamus, and this structure that regulates a lot of things, it's in the middle of your brain, and it produces something called thyrotrophin releasing hormone. For the sake of this video, I'm going to call this hormone TRH because it's a lot easier to say. So the hypothalamus produces this TRH and this then travels in the blood down to the pituitary gland where it stimulates the pituitary gland to produce something called thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH. Now, as you'd imagine, this thyroid stimulating hormone causes the thyroid to, to produce more of its hormones. Now, it also does another thing. It also increases the uptake and the usage of iodine. And iodine is important in the production of thyroid hormone from thyroglobulin. So it produces iodine and it also produces more thyroid hormones. The thyroid gland, just for the sake of completeness, also produces something called calcitonin. And calcitonin is, in, is important for the regulation um, of calcium in the blood and the deposition of calcium into the bones. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to ignore that this, this is, is part of it. That will be in a separate video. Now the thyroid produces two thyroid hormones. The first one is called thyroxine, and that's T4. And the second one is T3, or triiodothyronine. Now T4 is produced first, and it lasts seven days as a half-life. And T3 has a half-life of only one day. Now T3 is the most important version of this because its effect is to increase the metabolic rate. It acts on almost all peripheral tissues uh, in order to increase the metabolic rate. Now T3 has another function and that is to feed back to the hypothalamus and feed back to the pituitary gland. The way it does this is when T3 hormones rise, they tell the hypothalamus and the pituitary to reduce the production of these hormones. Therefore, if you get too much T3, you'll get less TRH and TSH. And as a result of that, you'll then get a reduction in the production of thyroid hormones, so your T3 level will reduce. So what you essentially get is over time, T3 level will do this. As it gets higher, it will feed back that there's too much and it will drop. As it gets too low, it will feed back that there's not enough and it will go up. But it stays fairly constant over time and that's how your body controls the metabolic rate.